You know that feeling when you draw a card and you look at your opponent and ask them for their current life totals? <laughs> yeah, oh so well. Those are good times. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Cody here. And this is Eli, and you are watching slash listening to Commander Cafe. All right, today we are going to be taking a look at Eli's build of Tatiova Benthic Druid, one of the uncommon commanders from Dominaria. Really, I think this should be a rare or even mythic with just how amazing this deck does. And it's all focused on something that both blue and green like. It has card draw and ramp built into the commander mm -hmm. with some life gain but really all that matters is this commander makes it so you can can trip every land you play yeah very powerful effect um starts to get out of control and combos off very hard once it does yeah when, once this deck combos off it pretty much makes itself unstoppable so um definitely a good one to get into um, All right, do you want to first start us off with your ramp package that you have for this rampy deck? Well, to make sure that I play Tatyova early, I run 14 sorcery speed, uh, I think maybe actually a couple instants, uh, ramp spells, most of which will grab at least one... Um, yeah, you're going through. Nope, okay. all sorcery. All sorcery, some are creature-based, whatever. <laughs> and then, uh, in addition to those 14, there's six kind of standout uh, cards that will make it so you can play multiple lands every turn. Um, and so those are kind of the ones that I think do the most work for me, because, like, there's burgeoning. For a single mana, it's an enchantment that whenever an opponent plays a land, you can put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. And with Tatyova's effect, it doesn't care if it's your land for turn, it's just any time you can put a land out, you're going to gain a life and draw a card. Follow that up with Terrain Generator. Uh, it's a land that can give you a colorless mana, or for two colorless and tapping this, put a basic land from your hand into play tapped, which... That does some amazing work. Also gets around you know, one card per turn, one land per turn. Mm -hmm. Or straight up break that with Wayward Sword Tooth or Exploration or Azusa, Lost But Seeking, which all let you play an additional land or Azusa lets you play two. Um, I don't even need Wayward Sword Tooth's ability to attack or block. It's just three mana for a creature that lets me play an additional land each turn. So those are all great additions. And the last one that really has done a lot of work for me is Lana War Scout from Dominaria. Uh, two mana, and he taps to put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. Yeah, so if you guys have seen the Command Zone's recent video on the statistics of Commander, you'll know that one of their big selling points was the person who has the most lands in play wins like 50% of the games. Well, this deck is usually going to have the most lands on the board. I mean, this, this deck by turn six or seven has well over 10 12 more lands than that usually so always a good thing when you have that many lands on turn five and tatiova is letting you draw cards on top of that so your hand is full while everyone else is still on say turn five or whatever as far as their would be turn order you're essentially on like turn 10 already mm -hmm. and you're gaining life so even if you're drawing all the threat it's fine mm -hmm. Uh, following that up with some draw, additional draw, which the deck doesn't need that much, but I included it anyways. There's both Ristic Study and Mystic Remora, both solid. Um, yeah, they're good includes in most blue decks um, that can take advantage of them. So just re any type of repeatable card draw I'm always a fan of. Definitely. And those two let you go a long ways and... Yeah, even if like Mystic Study doesn't draw you too many cards, it's still taxing your opponents for the cards they do play, which is still a very powerful effect. In Mystic Remora, I found that any time an opponent plays a spell, they're you're drawing a card because they are not paying the four mana. 
So following those up, I have some no max hand size because oftentimes you get to the point where you're just pitching land, spare lands into the grave at the end of each turn, uh, usually to replay with things like Crucible and stuff like that. But So I have Venser's Journal, which goes crazy. Thought Vessel, which is additional ramp. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Ristic, er, Reliquary Tower, there which is... Uh, just a land that gives you no max hand size. Yeah, and I think Vincer's Journal is a very underrated card. I have it in a few of my decks that doesn't even draw that many cards and or anything like that. But um, the fact that you're gaining like even five life of upkeep is still still a big deal. But if you can get to a point where you have 10, 15, 20 cards in your hand at the beginning of your upkeep and gaining that much life, suddenly you're a life gain deck. Mm-hmm. Um, removal wise, my removal is kind of split in half. I have a pile of mainly single target removal, um, with Hercules Recall being the only thing that hits everything, um, and that's just all artifacts. But uh, the most important single target removal I have is just Broken Bond, because it follows the whole theme of the deck with destroy target artifact or enchantment and then put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. So getting even more of those lands out into play, cheating that one land to turn. Mm-hmm. Putting that on... Basically, any effect that puts a land onto the field, this deck loves, and that's just one of them. Um, following that up, there is a nice little counter package because it is... Most of the time, there are, wi or there are win conditions without combos, but the main win condition in this deck is a combo. And so... I run six counter spells that, using some of the other cards in the stack, like Praetor's Council, I can reuse. So, um, I've gotten into counter wars, and I have not lost one yet with this. Yeah, going against it, it's tough to interrupt once this deck starts, get, starts to get going, even if I can see it coming and hold up counter spells and ways to interact or target the removal for Tatiova, it's still very tough to interact with if you have this much protection for it. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that allow me to build up to the combo point relatively quickly uh, include Leyline of Anticipation, which just lets you play everything at flash. It's this deck's version of Vidalcan Ori uh, with the chance to come in for free. Um, I would have Vidalcan in here, but I only have a few copies, and so it was in another deck at the time. But Leyline's done me just fine. Um, I typically, if I have that out, I don't even win on my turn. I win on someone else's turn, because mm -hmm. why not? <laughs> um, a major, if it sits out, card in the deck uh, that can put you ahead of the game is Helm of the Host. Um, which I've used it to not only copy Tatyova, but I've made copies of Azusa, mm -hmm. allowing me to play four lands per turn, and then after that, six lands per turn. And it spirals out of control really fast. Every time I play Helm of the Host, it becomes the top thing to target, which takes a little heat off of Tatyova, which is the secret. Yeah, and the fact that you're able to play like six lands a turn but each time you're playing one, you're drawing cards, you're drawing into more gas with Tatiova. It just snowballs out of control pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Gets through the deck super fast. There is no stopping it once you're about halfway through the deck, which is usually only about six, seven turns in. <laughs> um, next up, Praetor's Council. Returns all the cards in your graveyard to your hand, exile it, and you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. So another time of that. It is eight mana. But to this deck, that's nothing. This deck runs Ulamog. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not looking to cheat Ulamog out. It's looking to hard cast. Yeah, it, Ulamog straight up falls in the removal category for this deck. <laughs> it exiles two permits. <laughs> <laughs> Following that up, we do have Crucible of Worlds and Raru Map Excavator for those times where we don't have no maximum hand size. Just pitch lands. You'll replay them later. <laughs> Seedborn Muse, a uh, amazing include with uh, Leyline because you know why take one turn per 
round when you can take a turn every turn. <laughs> yeah, anytime you can substitute cards to make up a band card effect, it's usually going to be a pretty good effect. Yeah, ley line plus, or playing a cro profit of crucifix in this deck is just absolutely amazing. It's amazing in most decks, but yeah, in this one especially so. So to follow all of that up, we do have the overall win condition of this deck. It's a pain for everyone else except for the person playing it. <laughs> Cody's lived through most of those times. Yes. I think I'd rather face KCIM Modern at this point. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so, not quite a win condition, but a lovely card for this deck that slows everyone else down and puts you ahead because of how many lands you can play per turn is Mana Breach. Three mana enchantment. When any player plays a spell, that player returns a land they control to their hand. I love this because it lets me play extra lands and draw extra cards. Everyone else hates it because they can't even play a ramp spell without de-ramping. <laughs> I, I don't think I've actually seen this one out. Um, I'm happy for that. But... Oh, I have gotten it out. It was, it was fantastic. I must not have been there. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of glad for that. That was the time where it actually beat a top-tier Memnarch deck. <laughs> Following that up, another near payoff, because Mana Breach will cause scoops, is Royal Elemental. It's a 6-drop 3-2 with flying, but it has landfall, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain control of target creature for as long as this is out. So... Why not just win by taking everyone's stuff? Another reason that they just <laughs> scoop sometimes, but it's fine. I like it. Yeah, it's one of my... Um, I don't have this in Marquesa of the Black Rose, but stealing people's cards is is a fun effect to do. Definitely a fun one. So next one, this has a major amount of value with just Tatyova on the field, but then with some of these other payoffs, it gets even better. But it's Scape Shift, which was just reprinted in Core 19. Yeah, I think it's down to $10 or so. Mm -hmm. If you don't have one, um, definitely get it up. I think I have two now. I bought one and then pulled one from a pack. Um, it takes a specific deck to run, like this one or my uh, Titiana? Titania? Titania. 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 There you go. We got there. Uh, um, <laughs> takes a specific deck to use properly. But in those decks, it is a powerhouse win condition. Just think about it. You sack, who cares how many lands? I usually, because of how often I can search the deck, will know how many lands, because it's one of the times I find a land, I'll also count the number. Sack that many lands, put that many into play. Tatyova draws you that many cards. <laughs> and then you've thinned out your deck with that many lands and that many draws you are super low on cards and you are super ahead of everyone else yeah you're basically just drawing gas at that point because mm -hmm. you're you're you thinned your deck we talk about how fetching and stuff isn't th doesn't thin your deck and doesn't do enough and especially in edh but when you thin your deck of all the lands it does enough <laughs> yeah especially when you can follow that up thinning your deck out with things like beacon of tomorrows you can always afford in this deck to cast it, and it shuffles itself into the library when you're down to, you know, 20 cards in the deck, and you can draw more than that in a turn. You get to take as many turns as you want, as long as you're careful with your draws after that. Right. But typically, you only need one or two turns to win with this, because the my favorite win con, besides attacking with, like, Avenger of Zendikar or Ulamog, is the mill package. That comes with Psychic Corrosion, which whenever you draw a card, each opponent puts the top two cards of their library into their grave. That gets a little irritating to them, but you can finish it off pretty quickly. Sphinx's Tutelage, which will completely wreck a monocolor deck, mm -hmm. but will still hurt an opponent pretty well. well. Altar of the Broods, which will, for every land, mill every opponent by one card. And finally, because of how much you're milling yourself, Lab Man. Because most of the time you have your uh, ley line out, and right as you're on the trigger to draw that final card, just flash him out. 
and then enter a counter war if anyone wants to contest that. But otherwise, you just win the game. Yeah, very powerful deck. Uh, I think Tatiova is very underrated as a uncommander, um, as they're calling them, I guess, nowadays. Um, the uncommon commanders from Dominaria. Um, definitely for an uncommon and cheap, easy card to get, you can make a really strong deck out of it. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably my overall favorite from Dominaria. Um, I haven't fully brewed most of the others. Uh, Muldrotha was the main other one that I built, and this one passed it so fast um, and fun to play for me. I think the only commander from Dominaria that might be better is Yargle, but... <laughs> <laughs> maybe a deck tech coming on that soon <laughs> we'll see um, but yeah so this is definitely a fun land matters deck uh, not one to build probably if it's going to be your only deck because your play group will get tired of it fast I mean I love playing it but I will try and bring it out maybe once per month at most because it's ruthless. Yeah, it definitely has a higher power level, so make sure your play group is knows that and can play choose their decks accordingly. Um, but yeah, otherwise, good solid deck. Um, if you have any suggestions for this deck or any of our our other ones, go ahead and leave us a comment in the uh, box below. Hit us up on Twitter if you want to. Submit your deck list for us to check out. Maybe we'll offer some improvements, or maybe we'll make a deck tech on it. Yep. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell notification icon thing. Yeah, it definitely helps us out a lot, gets the word out. Um, we're, we're working on getting our videos out there larger. We're talking to some people about getting it shared on bigger platforms, so... but. Making sure you like that and share it will go a long way in doing that. Yep. The more we can do, the more we can do in the future. Or maybe we can get some guest stars. Right now, we already have a, a few people who want to show up on our show. Mm -hmm. They're all our playgroup friends. But, right. yeah, we'll check it out and see what we can do. Hopefully, we can provide just the best content that we can. And yeah, we're looking at just future stuff. Until next time, this is Commander Cafe, signing off.